thank you very much for this introduction. And um, I apologize for my voice. I haven't fully recovered, just a regular cold, not coronavirus, <laughs> never visited China. <laughs> so everyone's safe. Italy? <laughs> no, haven't been in Italy for a year. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, talking about talking about problems, uh, um, I think I think every problem is actually uh, an opportunity. Yeah. So, um, speaking of problems that we had in past, I don't know any other industry. Um, that was so impacted by populism. And I can confirm that this government, this regulator, um, in all, is the least politically biased. So I hope this will continue. And I hope that the whole uh, sector finally will get out of the negative uh, financial result zone and will start producing uh, profits. But today is actually, um, I wanted to share with you what's on our mind this year. Um, a lot of talking about the new Green Deal and I think that it's, it's a good thing. I think that these changes are irreversible. And I think that our job, since we're in the uh, uh, transportation business, is to prepare the infrastructure to accept the new energy. So, obviously, the trend is to replace the old dirty energy with the new green sources of energy. That's for sure. Talking about the balance, I've heard uh, so many times today this word, the balance. Um, look at the Ukrainian energy balance and look at the European one. I think that Ukraine has a unique opportunity today to be on the same page with the European Union and do exactly the same what European companies do. Not what the Europe was doing 15 or 20 years ago. So this is our unique chance. Obviously the um, the dirty uh, or old energy sources will be replaced by new. And um, when we were thinking of what would be the uh, major trend, I think um, hydrogen is the most obvious answer to it. Talking about the European agenda, we must uh, bear in mind that Ukrainian gas market and Ukrainian gas infrastructure is the most integrated among all of the Ukrainian energy sectors. It's completely integrated into European market in terms of the trading market and in terms of infrastructure, interconnections, and so on. So um, answering the question, what, what do we think of the uh, actual reforming. I think um, the reforming in general is almost completed. And I think the outcome of this reform is pretty obvious. We have the independent TSO. We have the 44 DSO operators. We have over 600 suppliers. We expect all of these suppliers to compete 
for the household consumer uh, as early as May 2020. In terms of market pricing, all of the market segments are now priced uh, fairly. Non-regulated for industrial consumers and exchange indicators for the PSO consumers. And I, and I totally agree with Andrei Kovalev that um, the major question is the uh, district heating. And we will have time um, until um, beginning of next heating season in October to resolve some uh, issues that are left in this, um, in this part. So what do we expect? We expect the PSO to be seized on May 1st, 2020. <coughs> and we expect there will be no price regulation by the government since then. This is our market expectations. We hope that it will happen, actually. Uh, talking about the uh, gas prices, gas prices in Ukraine are pretty European. So if you look at it, it's roughly the 17 euro per megawatt currently, the price in, uh, in the household segment. So um, <coughs> if you, for example, a trader from Hungary, you would probably be interested in it. But uh, if you, a German uh, distribution system operator uh, acting in, uh, let's say, Czech Republic, that you would definitely would not be interested in Ukrainian distribution sector because the distribution tariffs remain uh, at a very low zone. It's actually three times lower on average uh, than in Europe. So, um, uh, step by step, hopefully, I think uh, we will be approaching the uh, uh, European uh, pricing for that, I will say. What is the major, uh, uh, major challenge for Ukrainian distribution system? It's an excessive capacity. I think it's the same problem with the transmission system and the distribution system as well. This system was not designed uh, for what we are now. It was designed in the Soviet times for a totally different country that doesn't exist anymore for the consumption of 100 billion cubic meters a year. Today, the distribution system distributes only 25 billion cubic meters a year. So it's four times lower. So imagine, for example, this beverage producer will be filling up every bottle, just a quarter of it, and selling it. So this is what the distribution system looks like at the moment. So it cannot exist in, 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 in these conditions and under these conditions anymore. So the obvious solution is the whole system design must be redesigned. And it must be redesigned according to the actual uh, demand and actual capacities required by this market. Um, thinking of redesign, we start the thinking of the next steps because talking about infrastructure, you cannot think about infrastructure in the um, year time horizon or three years. You should be thinking about 10, 20, or 30 years, uh, the best. Yeah. And if you look at the global trend, obviously new sources of energy uh, should enter into the existing infrastructure. And existing infrastructure should be adopted to accept the new 
sources of energy. And today I'll be talking about the hydrogen. So what we did over the uh, last uh, few years, we had to create the tools um, from the scratch. We had created the tools and uh, later on today you will, uh, uh, you will see a short presentation about the tools. I will not stop on it, but as a result of it, uh, last year was the first year we were able to model specific segments of the network and finally decide what exactly needs to be done to cut down the capacity in, in the exact segment of the network. So um, those are examples of the pilot projects that we have. On a regular basis, most of them had a payback period of less than 10 years, which is pretty decent results for the infrastructural project. Um, today, uh, or this year, we will add another pilot. Um, we will start testing the hydrogen on a, uh, on a uh, closed um, pieces of network and we will monitor how the existing equipment and materials will be interacting with the mixture of methane and hydrogen. Switching to, switching to new energy, as it was pointed out today many times, will require investments. It will not happen just because of a goodwill. We will need to invest. Today, investments into distribution network is miserable. So if you're talking about the uh, level of investment for one consumer a year, today in Ukraine, it is allowed to spend only one, roughly one euro per year per one consumer in investments into the network. Compared to, for example, Czech Republic that spends about 50 euro per one consumer a year in investments. So th th this thing needs to be fixed. Talking about the required investments, we've created the um, learn term plan. And if we uh, go back to history, obviously almost 30 years, the whole system uh, had a huge lack of investments and we need to catch up with the um, equipment that is outdated, uh, totally depreciated, it needs to be replaced. Um, later on, the investment focus could be switched to uh, more to new technologies and stuff like that. So evaluating the investment volumes required for the Ukrainian uh, distribution system I would say it's about three to four hundred million euro a year. So we are talking about, if we're talking about the five, five year period, so it's about two billion euros. It's quite a massive investment project could be. And obviously today, the only source of investment is the income, um, the tariff income uh, of operators. Um, to attract these kind of investments, I think the regulatory model needs to be adopted, it needs to be changed. The economic sense of investing into the uh, infrastructure should be created. Yeah. And we had a few thoughts about it. And, uh, Having this opportunity to share it with the regulator and, and, and the uh, 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 member of the parliament and, and many other people from government. So um, uh, we try not to invent uh, something new. So we not try to, not to invent the bicycle. It was invented many times before. Um, the stimulating tariff model 
should be adopted. And basically, uh, we can talk about regulatory asset-based model, or we can talk about the uh, uh, peak capacity demand model, and which is regulating actually the rate of return. So either model should be stimulating, which means any improvement of operating efficiency uh, should be stimulated by the regulation. Yeah? Um, why do we need to change the model? We need to attract the long term capital, either equity or debt capital, to finance this kind of uh, large infrastructural pro projects. And this is the key thing, and I hope this discussion will, will be open this year. We'll start this year, and we will proceed on that. And um, just to finish up this statement, I think this such a massive investment project as redesign of gas distribution infrastructure in Ukraine can become a real basis for the economic growth um, and can lay a firm foundation for the Ukrainian energy security. Um, thank you.